with dead. Our pain is still right with us. We need... We need more strength. We need more men. Diamond Dogs needs to be bigger. Missions have come in too. We still have a long road ahead of us. Staff assigned. Emmerich didn't go for Sahel's armor because of its strength. He had nukes in mind. Exactly. It's meant to use its body as the fuel component for a nuclear weapon. Sahelanthropus uses built-in uranium enrichment Archaea to melt its own body and extract uranium-235 from the depleted uranium in its armor. Those Archaea perform the enrichment in an extremely short time. The concentration jumps by a factor of several hundred, from 0.2% to over highly enriched weapons grade uranium. Sahelanthropus's body itself becomes a nuclear bomb. Emmerich says if it were to self-destruct, the nuclear yield would be somewhere in the region of 15 kilotons. Since you need about 50 kilograms of highly enriched uranium to trigger a nuclear reaction, that would mean Sahelanthropus contains something like 23 tons of depleted uranium. That's not very much. No, it isn't. That's about what you'd expect to find in a main battle tank's armor. and the international community will never suspect a thing. I just received word from the R&D team and the transport team out of Afghanistan. They finished installing Sahelanthropus on the base. It's ours now. All right. Don't let any of the staff touch that thing. Especially Emmerich. Of course. That guy's crush on Sahelanthropus is beyond a joke. Guess he really wants to see his tech stand on its own two legs this time. That's not gonna happen. I know it. So you've got no plans to make it operational again? Damn right. Boss, I want to hear it straight from you. Hear what? What the hell do you want with that thing? The drive is busted. It's not like it has a nuke on board. Even if the metallic archaea could turn it into a nuclear weapon, all it can do is self-destruct. Sahelanthropus just isn't a weapon anymore. It'll draw unwanted attention without even being a deterrent. I know. The weapon's development strut sank two feet under that thing's wake. That's one year's drop in a single night. We've started on reinforcing the strut, but there's no guarantee it'll hold up if a storm hits. I know that, too. Boss, why keep it? It's a mark. A us Diamond Dogs, we don't have a country to call home. That means we have no past, nothing to prove that we lived. Every one of us threw it all away when we came here. Sahelanthropus is a symbol to show that the likes of us brought at least one crisis to its end. A mark in history. So we can't just fade away. It's of no practical use to us. But we still need it. A symbol of what we've done. I'm glad I sounded you out on this. Snake, on behalf of all of us, I want to thank you. I don't need gratitude. I need security. Keep Emmerich away. You 
said that the nuke Skullface was trying to spread around the world were equipped with a failsafe. Something that could shut them down at will. His will. Quite so. After all, he needed a guarantee that a buyer wouldn't simply turn the weapons back on him. So how can they be stopped? The criticality trigger, that is, the detonator, is a complete black box design. Any attempt to dismantle it causes it to melt in seconds, using the corroding archaea. The design ensures that no detonation is possible unless he disengages the lock. So he had a way to disengage it remotely? Precisely. The client simply presses a button. At that moment, the detonator begins transmission with a surveillance satellite. The satellite reports to him how the client is trying to use the nuke. If he does not object, the lock is disengaged. But if it's a risk to him in any way... If detonation does not occur within a preset time, after the lock is disengaged, the nuke is rendered useless. Who the hell would buy something with strings attached like that? The client would never know until the moment they actually try to use it. Most likely, he would have explained the time delay as the detonator's needing time to activate. And he only intended to sell to technologically primitive groups in the first place. Let me guess. He claimed it was defective and offer a replacement. Shadier than a used car salesman. Skullface shakes your hand like a friend, using the other to control you like a puppet. Please? This is how he works. Assigned. Code Talker, haven't seen you eat a single thing since you got here. Let me guess. Photosynthesis. What makes you say that? Well, a long time ago, I knew someone with a similar ability. Well, you are correct. Most of my body is covered with parasites. I supply them. ...to light. Mm -hmm. It isn't just my skin either. The parasites also act as my eyes. They have replaced many of my internal organs as well. It is thanks to them that I live on after over a century. How did you obtain them anyway? Through your research? I would like to say as much, but there is more to it than that. Let me take you back 20 years. I had hit a dead end with my parasite research. Then I was approached by a foundation they said they had a sample of an unusual strain of parasite. Which foundation? Apparently, they had links to ARPA. But that is all I learned. I was somewhat ignorant of the ways of the world. Just being able to study it was enough for me. Yeah, I've heard that before. Go on. Half in doubt, I visited them to discover the body of an old man. Well... To be precise, his partial remains. A collection of parts, you could say. The man had died in an explosion. An old man, you say? His flesh had not decomposed. In fact, the tissue's cells were still metabolizing. The parasite had infected, or should I say assimilated with, the tissues, and was keeping them alive. 
I became obsessed with studying the body parts, foregoing food and even sleep. Every day was filled with new discoveries. The parasite's biology, internal anatomy, life cycle. But there was only so much I could learn through observation. And so I made a decision to, to live with them. So you implanted them inside you from the dead man's flesh? Correct. <sighs> It was quite a gamble, whether or not they would adapt to me. But fortunately, it appears I was compatible with them. Or perhaps, through my many years of research, my immune system learned to tolerate them. Were they that body's only parasite? Yes. However, there was a separate specimen that supplied its host with adrenaline in response to pain, and yet another that could control insects at will through secreting heterogeneous pheromones. I wanted exposure to them, to take them into me, but my wishes were denied. Their records, though, provided clues that helped advance my research. Would you care to join me? A life spent never worrying about food is a most wonderful one. I think I'll pass. But thanks. This has been helpful. Fought alongside the Sandinistas. An army without a country. I mercs, four mercs. Something no government won't complain. Sign for one of their military muscle. The boss said no. So they move in the Caribbean base massacre. I hear you. Skullface has finally burned out. The world is rid of his existence at last. Was he still alive? You could say that. But you could also say he'd been dead for decades. What's that supposed to mean? Biologically speaking, it's hard to say how much... No. The primary effect. Keeping a dying host alive as long as possible. That is the whole point. But in the end, he grew too dependent on his children. Hmm. As if he had any other way to keep on living. He first underwent parasite therapy before the Soviet Union became his home. His body was horribly burned. Fire washed across his thin young frame and stole his skin and his throat, even his lungs. Only through repeated therapies could the parasites keep him alive. Most of his life became something the parasites gave to him. And then he lost the ability to die. That is correct. The parasites live on past the host's death, still aiding cell composition. At that stage, there's no way to extract them from the host cells. There is no way of knowing when the last cell of Skullface's body would die. The only choice was to burn the whole thing. And his children, along with it. <laughs> and I am one to talk.